Hello. In this problem, we are given the, the speed of a moving baseball after it's been thrown. We're given its angular speed, so the speed of its spin. And we're also given uh, its travel distance. So we're told that when we throw the ball, it travels 60 feet in a straight line. Now, obviously, realistically, it wouldn't be a perfectly straight line since it's going to start falling and its trajectory is going to be a bit more curved. But uh, the problem is clearly simplifying some details for us to make some things easier to calculate. Now, the first thing you might notice about this problem is that of all the values we're given, none of the units really match up. Uh, we're given the distance in feet. Uh, we're given the angular speed as revolutions per minute. But then we're told the speed of the baseball is per hour instead of minutes, and in terms of miles instead of feet. So if we were to make any calculations at all, then we might get pretty confused there. So I think the first thing we'd want to do to solve this problem is to perform a few unit conversions to make sure that our units will match up when we find time to actually make the calculations. So I think it would be easiest to take the speed we're given, 85 miles per hour, and then convert this from, instead of miles per hour, we could convert this to feet per minute. So that way the units match up more neatly with the units we're given for the angular speed and for the path distance of the ball. So here is the speed of the ball as it's given to us. So first thing I want to do is convert it from miles to feet. So we'll use a, the conversion ratio that tells us that in one mile there is 5,280 feet. And uh, don't be ashamed if you don't know off the top of your head how many feet are in a mile. It's, it's not really something that I always remember either. So, And I don't think you'll be expected to memorize it by most people. But, uh, but yeah, so we'd orient it this way so that the miles cancel out. And then we'll want, to convert, we'll want to add another conversion ratio to convert from hours to minutes. So, of course, there are 60 minutes in an hour. That one maybe I would be a little more ashamed of if you didn't know off the top of your head. And so, of course, the hours now cancel out. So if we were to put this into a calculator, then we will find that this speed is equal to 7,480 feet per minute. So now that we've gotten our units sorted out nice and neatly, uh, the next thing I think we'd want to do is actually try to solve the problem. Now, keep in mind, we're looking for the number of revolutions. And there are ways that we can connect this to other variables we have. So we are given the angular speed of the ball, and as we know, angular speed is equal to the number of revolutions, usually represented by theta, for example, divided by t, the amount of time that we're looking at for a given interval. Now because the number of revolutions is what we want to find, and because the angular speed, represented by this omega here, is something that we have, you might notice that we can solve this for the number of revolutions, by multiplying both sides of this equation by t, which will tell us that the number of revolutions, theta, is equal to the angular speed, omega, which is given to us, times t, the time. Only problem with this formula is that we don't have the time. So first we'll want to find some other way to get the amount of time. And we can do that using the speed formula. Kind of similarly to angular speed, uh, the formula for standard linear speed uh, or v is equal to uh, the displacement or the, the distance that something travels or delta x divided by again the amount of time or t. Now the problem does tell us the ball's linear speed 85 miles per hour and the problem also tells us the distance that it travels the delta x the the 60 foot flight path. So we can take this formula now and solve it for t algebraically and we can do that by multiplying both sides of this equation by t, and then dividing both sides of the equation by v. And ultimately, that tells us that the amount of time that the ball is spinning is equal to uh, the, the displacement, delta x, divided by v, the speed. So, now that we have a lovely little formula for the amount of time that the ball is in the air, we can substitute that into the formula we found earlier for the number of revolutions by replacing the, the t variable with this. Since these two variables, since delta x and v are both variables we have, while t is something that we'd have to solve for first.
So by this logic, plugging delta x over v into t, we have a new formula for the number of revolutions, telling us that the number of revolutions is equal to omega times delta x over v. Or in other words, it's equal to the angular speed of the ball times the distance that it travels divided by uh, the tangential, the linear speed of the ball's motion. So this is the final formula that we'll want to use. So for example, in the case of the numbers we've been given, we can plug um, 1,800 revolutions per minute in for omega, delta, uh, 60 feet into delta x, and then 7,480 feet per minute into v. And so if we plug those numbers into a calculator, we will find that the number of revolutions is equal to approximately 14.4. And that is the number of revolutions that the ball takes.